We're now joined by Ken Forth. He is the uh, chair of the labor section of the Ontario Fruit and Vegetable Growers Association. Hi, Ken. Uh, how are things going today? Good. Hey, we've uh, we've seen blanket coverage of the impact of the recent uh, Ontario minimum wage increase to fourteen dollars. From your perspective, you know what's the story in Ontario agriculture? Are we seeing? Are we starting to see direct impact at the farm gate? We sure got. We sure have a lot of farm employers that are pretty upset about this. Um, we, we presented the government over the last six or eight months with all the data they needed done by professional consultants of what it would cost this industry over the next uh, three years. And it's a substantial amount of money. And although we'd like to pay our people as much as we can, unfortunately, our prices are determined by the, the major chain. And they tell us what we will receive, and it's based on how much imports are in our market. And those imports are from the states, but they're also from Mexico. The labor coefficient is, well, be 14 times lower than ours. And it has a big impact on that price. We either match that price coming out of Mexico or we don't get the business. Can tell where me that will shake out at the end of the day, I don't know. Right. Hey, tell me about your firm. Now, I, you know, I think you have about 20 employees, um, do a lot of, you know, um, labor on the farm. Talk about, I guess, your situation. Well, my situation, I'm, I'm a medium to small farmer. I have, have, have about 20 employees, um, and all we grow is broccoli. And But it will cost my farm more than $100,000 extra in wages this year to do the same crops we did last year. <laughs> and I can tell you that would be devastating if that happened. Martins are real close in this industry, and if we don't see a bump in the price of, of, of our product, we'll have to make some other decisions at the end of the year. Like on our farm, we used to have a five- and a ten-year plan. Now we have a 12-month plan because hmm. we will not continue to produce food, and a lot of other farmers won't either if, 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 there's, if there's no black in it. Like if, there's, if, there's no, if it's all in the red, we will not probably continue to do that but we are optimistic that we can cut some more costs and see if we can stay in the black so we'll see where that goes so let's talk about the options I'm obviously we're seeing a lot of businesses now in the media and we're getting lots of reports on what they're doing everything from shortening hours to reducing benefits and raising prices i know raising prices is not an option for you but what are the options well there'll be there'll, there'll be some jobs on our farms on all of our farms that won't get done anymore Period. A lot of us did jobs on those farms to keep people working uh, in some days, and also to um, to make the places better, to make the business better. There'll be a lot of those small things, and they'll add up to be quite a bit that won't get done anymore. The second thing will happen is people will start to rationalize their crops, and there, there's lots of crops in horticulture. There's 125 of them, so some of those crops could be dropped from from farms that that's what, that's what will happen we'll shorten hours as much as we possibly can i don't know where we can go with that or anybody else but there will be you know that's where we're going to have to go there will have to be a rationalization of that business one way or the other now your customers you know wholesalers retailers are being squeezed could we potentially see wholesalers and retailers putting the squeeze on growers like yourself to take less for your products I would hope they would actually see the light to that we're all in the same boat because we, we, we're not allowed to squeeze anybody else. Our major inputs, we're told what we will receive, what we will pay for those, and our outputs, we're told what we will receive for those. So if, if they did that, if they did that, and I'm not saying they're going to, but if they did that and came back and said, our costs are more, we're going to charge you that much more, or we're going to pay you that much less, that would be the double whammy that would really affect us. Like right now, we're looking at 24% increase in wages as of January the 1st, an, an, another 8% next January. And if we ever seen, uh, like that's 32% over an 18-month period, if we ever seen that them start to pay us less again, there would be a lot of rationalization in the industry next year. 
Now, we interviewed Agriculture Minister Jeff Leal in late December, and he said the government un- understands the un- impact um, that the wage hike is going to have on the sector. He said that's why the government has earmarked $60 million over the next two years to help you adjust. What do you know about that funding, and can it make a difference? Technically, that's a that's a that that's part of a of, of a program that was what has diminished over the years lately. So really, our study shows that over a, over a two year period, it's going to cost us two hundred and ninety seven million dollars over two years. So you do the math: mm-hmm. two ninety seven versus sixty. I'm I'm glad Jeff was able to get that. I think he was. He was the guy, and I have to say, the minister of or of um, agriculture, Jeff Leo. I think he did his best. I think he listened to our stories. I think he believed us. We told our story to a lot of people, and I think there was quite a bit of lack of understanding anywhere else. Like sixty million is, is okay. It help. It it will help a little, but it does. Like in the first year alone, we're going to be. 165 million short in wages. So this isn't a wage subsidy at all. It's just it's beefing up um, um, a safety program that had been diminished over the years. No, Ken. I mean, we're we're starting to hear the fallout from the daycare industry, uh, other industries here. Um, the government is scrambling. You know, do you think you know they may come around uh, in agriculture? That would be a great hope. But we we made some pretty good uh, presentations to the legislative assemblies and everything. We we went to see everybody. We've seen all the senior bureaucrats in all the departments. We've seen the senior ministers and the premier. We could not make an impact on them that this would be a bad thing. Like we're not saying don't do it. If they had of even if they have had of even went over a three year period instead of a two year period, you know. Watch the future of locally grown fruits and vegetables in this province if the government or the future government doesn't move off this program. That's a really good question. There's a whole lot of other answers, uh, things on that, too. like what's going to happen in NAFTA. We don't know that either. Like it could get really brutal and, and there may not be, you know, like maybe we'll have a fruit and vegetable industry. I pray to God we do. Could be end up to be a cottage industry for We'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, you know, when I was a little boy, my grandfather used to say to me, you know, farmers are always worried about the weather. If I went to my grandson now, who's the same age, he's four years old, and said to him, I'd say, Riley, you know, we're not worried about the weather so much, but farmers all worry about the gun because everything seems to be so erratically done. Well, Ken, hey, thank you for your time, sir. Always great to chat with you. We will be uh, watching for developments. Take care.